when using a JOT, the application needs to perform input validation on all the fields in the JOT, as these are just user input. The JOT is carried around by the user and it's handed to the application. The application needs to be careful not to trust the contents of the JOT any more than it would trust any other user input. So let's take a look at why this is. And when we visit this page, a JOT is generated and sent off to the endpoint. And so we can actually go over to the proxy tab and look at the history and watch this request. We'll see this request here, sending this jot over to the response. So to make this demo a little less complicated, we're gonna to toggle security to level zero in Matilda, and that'll take signatures out of play so that we can just focus on the problems with not validating the input fields. So let's go over to jwt.io and we'll paste this jot in here and then we're going to replace some of the data, say the user ID, with some malicious input that the application might encounter. So let's say that the uh, attacker was putting in some type of an injection attack. So we'll do that here. All right, so here we have the canonical example of some type of uh, database injection. Now, um, certainly whether or not the application is vulnerable to injection is a uh, different issue, and naturally the application should have remediated any kind of vulnerabilities it has. Nonetheless, for the purposes of the demo, we're going to use an application that does have uh, such a problem so that we can see the issues in action. And to highlight why applications must validate any fields in a JOT before using them, since it, there may be a vulnerability in the application that just isn't known about. So like any other user input that we would validate. So then we're gonna take the, the JOT back over to the application. And what we'll do is we'll take the request and send it to the repeater so we can replay it. We'll replay the original request and it works fine. And then we're gonna replace the JOT with the one we just made that has replaced the user field with the attack. And as you can see, the data goes into the application just like any user input would go into the application. And in this case, because the application happens to be vulnerable to this particular problem, it ended up pulling back all the information out of the database. Now, again, the application should have been using store procedures, and this would have mitigated the database injection um, along with the other database security issues like excessive privileges, and other problems associated with not using store procedures. Even a naive application could have used uh, parameterized queries, which wouldn't fix any other database security issues, but at least uh, parameterized queries can stop database injection. So it would have, uh, again, it's a naive defense, but it would have at least fixed this one problem. And then finally, the application should have been using input validation because uh, applications should never trust any information coming out of JOTS as its user information, just like if the user was inputting the data into a form field or the application was getting information from a file or other source outside the application. So lesson learned here is make sure that we are validating all the fields of the JOT as we consume them. The, we're checking the signature, we're checking the IAT and EXP fields to see if the session has expired. We're checking any kind of user information that's in there um, or roles or other claims that are in the JOT. Be careful to validate those as well. And if anything is not as expected, then do not accept the JOT.